All right, Alexander, let's discuss the uh, defense minister's meeting and what is now looking like to be uh, something that's inevitable, which is a rapprochement between Erdogan and Assad, Turkey and uh, Syria. So we had uh, the defense ministers of these countries get together and kind of lay down the groundwork for an eventual uh, meeting of, uh, of both leaders of these uh, countries. Huge news if this does happen. Very, very big news if this happens. It's been a long 12, 12 years now? now yeah, absolutely. It's it's a, uh, Syria. Exactly. Yeah, 12 a lo- years. A long, winding, twisted road, but we are, we are almost there. Now, a couple of weeks ago, Erdogan was saying that you know, in order for there to be a summit meeting, uh, there has to be first a meeting of intelligence chiefs. Well, there have been several of those, Turkish and Syrian intelligence chiefs. There have been several of those already. Then he said the defense ministers need to meet. They've just done so. They met in Moscow. Shoigu, the Russian defense minister, was present and he was mediating this meeting. So we had the Syrian and Turkish defense ministers meeting. And then Erdogan said, after the defense ministers meet, the foreign ministers need to meet. And Kavusoglu, the Turkish foreign minister, has just said that he anticipates that there will be a meeting of foreign ministers, Syria, Russia, and Turkey, uh, sometime in January. He's, well, early in 2023. He said that he's going to be meeting himself one-to-one with Lavrov fairly soon. So there'll be another meeting of the foreign ministers, and that will then clear the way for Assad and Erdogan finally to meet. And they used to be close friends and partners. They then went through this terrible war in which Erdogan attempted to overthrow Assad. That has clearly failed. He's got an election that he's got to win in a short time. Uh, He needs to try and get all those Syrian refugees back to Syria. He needs to find some way of ending this crisis in Syria, which has become very unpopular in Turkey. And he also needs Syria's support to deal with the Kurds. So that's the incentive for Erdogan to move. And for Assad, obviously, if Turkey closes the border to um, insurgencies, to Islamist insurgents, to jihadi groups, well, that is the effective end of the Syrian war. All that's left then is to tidy up the situation with the Kurds and to get the United States out of Syria and with Turkey on board with Syria, to be straightforward about it, there's very little prospect of the United States being able to cling on. It would be regionally isolated, and the US troops in eastern Syria would be, frankly, at considerable risk if they stayed there. A huge diplomatic win for Russia and for Putin. Uh, They've shown tremendous patience to try and get this, this deal worked out. And it looks like it's happening. And a huge loss for, uh, I would say, the Obama administration, who started down this road of uh, trying to overthrow Assad and a massive loss for the neocons as well. What do you think they're going to try to do to uh, spoil this as we head towards the finish line, the final stretch? They're going to pull every single, uh, every pull out every single stop, pull every string to try to get Erdogan defeated in the in the in the pending elections. Now, I don't think I don't think Erdogan will let that happen. I mean, I I don't think that elections in Turkey are you know fully free and fair anymore. I'm you know I'm sorry to say that, but that's what I believe. And I think besides which, Erdogan still has a critical mass of support within Turkey. Um, uh, and I think he'll be able to put, keep it together. But the way they will do that, the way they will try to earn, undermine Erdogan's position is by creating more problems in the Turkish economy. And of course, Turkey has high inflation. The lira has been, shall we say, unstable. Uh, Erdogan has idiosyncratic views about interest rates, which many people feel stand in the way of an economic stabilization in Turkey. And the United States still has substantial levers to create disruption within the Turkish economy. Now, 
in the past, whenever it looks like the lira was about to collapse, someone has stepped in to help stabilize it. And, you know, we've never been told exactly who that someone is. It's unlikely to be the Russians, by the way, because I doubt they have the resources to do that. But given that the Russians and the Chinese are working very, very closely together, it might have been the Chinese, for all we know. But anyway, there's going to be a battle over the internal direction of Turkey. I should say that the Turkish opposition parties also support a rapprochement with Syria. But I suspect that nonetheless, the United States would rather see them in power than Erdogan because Erdogan is such a powerful figure in Turkey. And the Russians, for their part, difficult partner that they though they find Erdogan to be, would still prefer him in power because ultimately he's the guarantor that this process will be continued through to its conclusion. So that's going to be the battle. It's going to be over the internal direction of Turkey and you're going to see major attempts to try and destabilize the situation in Turkey. And indeed, um, just before we did this program, I saw reports of a major bomb attack in a Turkish city. And of course, remember, there's lots of Islamists, Islamist groups, Islamist uh, jihadi groups operating in Turkey. Um, who knows? They, some of them may have the necessary contacts with our friends in Washington, and they might be activated as well. You know, Erdogan did one very, very clever thing is he always held that uh, that migrant card. Yeah. And I, I would always ask myself, why, why does he continue to hold those migrants in place? Yes. And I think that if they try to destabilize Turkey and things get really out of hand, then uh, Erdogan has, I think, the, the checkmate move, which is migrants flooding into Europe. It's kind of like you destabilize us. Well, yes. we can destabilize the entirety of, uh, of Europe. So I think that even if they try to destabilize Erdogan as he approaches some sort of negotiation with Syria, he has some pretty powerful cards to play. Oh, yeah. He's got many powerful cards. I mean, as I said, he does have a critical uh, 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 mass of support within Turkey. And I think this is something people should never underestimate. I mean, for all the fact that he's had, uh, uh, he's lost popularity recently he's lost support in places like ankara and, and istanbul i think you know in uh, you know much of turkey he continues to have a lot of popular support which will stick with him because uh, uh, of what he's managed to do over the last you know 20 years 30 years i mean he's put turkey on the map He's also transformed Turkey in many ways. So I think, you know, he has that support. There's something else, which is, of course, if there's an attempt to destabilize Turkey, this is a much more sophisticated country, society, than it was 50, 60 years ago. And I think a lot of Turkish people will understand very well who is trying to do it. And they will look to the strong leader, who's the person who can keep things, hold things together. And that, of course, is Erdogan. I mean, Turkey has experienced so much instability um, in its recent past. They will not want to go down that way again. And if they feel, you know, that somebody's trying to destabilize them, I can very easily see that that will result in a, in a backlash and a pushback. And, you know, that should not be an underestimated. My own view, is that whatever problems Erdogan experiences over the next few months, and they could be significant, I think he will come through, and I think he will remain Turkey's leader for the foreseeable future. All right. Uh, another big winner out of this uh, deal, if it does come to pass, is Iran, I imagine. Absolutely, of course it is. I mean, it it it, it strengthens. You can you can almost starting to see a kind of belt of northern countries in the Middle East: Turkey, Iran, perhaps even Afghanistan, where the Taliban are now having very close talks with the Russians. 
um, you could start to see that there's a sort of line of countries that are starting to emerge and it makes it much more difficult it seems to me to start anything against iran especially with um, syria stabilized and syria is going to continue to be a very strong ally of iran and of course iraq also okay um any any final thoughts for you yeah i mean this is this is going to i mean it, it, let us not underestimate. I mean, I said I think Erdogan will pull through. He'll get through this. But let's not underestimate what's going to happen in Turkey itself. Um, we're going to be getting an awful lot of news out of Turkey over the next few months. And a lot of it could be, I'm afraid, rather grim. I mean, I, I would not be surprised to see quite a lot of violence there. In order to... To derail well, this, this meeting. In order to de- meeting. in order to derail this meeting. I mean, bear in mind... Derail Erdogan in general. Islam, in the me- yeah. Derail Erdogan in general. And being, bear in mind, a lot of these uh, jihadi groups who Erdogan himself sponsored <laughs> must be very angry by the fact that there's a rapprochement now between Turkey and Syria. I mean, they must be very, very angry about it. And um, so that would make them more than willing one suspects to go down the route that some people in Washington and elsewhere might want them to go. Uh, we've seen violence in, in Iran recently. We could very well see violence in Turkey. I'm sure that Erdogan will be able to keep control of it. He is going to have friends who will help him do it. The Russians will, as I said, they will have an investment in Erdogan's survival. So will the Chinese. I think he will pull through. But as I said, you know, it could be very, very um, unstable and volatile for at least, um, you know, the next year or so. Right. Yeah, I wonder if that's another reason why Erdogan keeps Greece on its toes. Yeah, as well. of course. Of course it is. I mean, you know, he's he's got to keep everybody in, you know, suspense. He's got, I mean, you're absolutely right, by the way, about the leverage he has over the EU with all the migrants who, to be clear, they don't want to stay in Turkey either. They don't want to go to Syria, but where they want to go is Berlin and Paris and those sort of places. Undoubtedly, that is the case. So, I mean, he can always open the floodgates. He's always in a position to do that. And he might do it, you know, if he's pushed. And, of course, he's keeping the Greeks tense and play, un, you know, un, under under stress as well. He's a master at these games. He's very, very skilled at this. Must be very, very exhausting for him to do. But he's now got the Russians at his back, probably the Chinese as well. We'll see. We'll see how he's able to pull it together. I'm confident he will. Okay. We will end it there. TheDuran.Locals.com Look for us on Rockfin as well. And go to the Duran shop. 10% off. Use the code. Good day. Take care.